Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at genes, the genome and proteome, coding for proteins, and then we'll finish with a summary. So first of all we need to introduce what we mean by the concept of a gene. So remember that DNA is the molecule that contains all of the instructions or the genetic information to develop the organism and create our general structure. So it's for the development of an organism, the growth and the functioning of the organism to survive through life. And the way that it does this is that DNA always codes for proteins. So the DNA molecule, remember, as you'll recognize as the double helix, contains all of the bases, which are A, C, T, and G. And DNA basically writes the instructions, and out of DNA, by being read, it can make proteins. And the proteins then act to develop our general structure, and they enact our overall functions. DNA doesn't code for anything else, like sugars or lipids or anything like that. It only codes for proteins, and a wide variety of proteins, each with a different purpose. So any DNA that's in an organism is a very, very long molecule, and it has different sections depending on what they do. So a section of DNA which codes for a specific polypeptide is known as a gene, and this is a really important definition you need to know. So here we've got a chromosome, and as we unwind the chromosome into smaller and smaller detail, and we end up with the actual DNA molecule. And a section of DNA contains a certain sequence and number of bases, so remember bases being a... C, T's and G's, and a certain section which codes for a particular polypeptide, which is a chain of amino acids, is known as a gene. And then a different gene, which would be a different section of bases, would code for a different polypeptide. And then overall DNA is just made up of lots of genes making different polypeptides, which then form different proteins. Some proteins come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Some proteins are made up of multiple polypeptides that come together to form a general overall structure. Therefore, because they have several polypeptides in them, and because one gene codes for one polypeptide, they're coded for by different genes, and multiple genes. So for example, we may be talking about this protein here, which has two polypeptides. And this protein has one polypeptide which is in this sort of turquoise colour, and then one polypeptide which is purple. So one gene in the DNA, gene number one, is going to code for polypeptide 1. And then elsewhere in the genome, we have gene 2, and this codes for polypeptide 2. So the two genes act together to make these two polypeptides, and as they interact, they make this overall protein, which is made of two polypeptides. As well as coding for polypeptides, genes code for functional RNA. So RNA is another version of a polynucleotide, which we won't go into too much detail here, but it can have different functional roles. And in the organism, they act in particularly for other roles that aren't involved with coding for proteins. So for example, the DNA gene, which might be here, can code for a particular molecule of RNA, which then becomes this molecule, which is known as tRNA, which is just an example of a type of RNA which has a specific function. In this case, tRNA helps carrying amino acids around the cell. There's also rRNA and mRNA as well. So by definition, Genes are sections of DNA coding for polypeptides and functional RNA. So we need to now be aware of two other concepts which are known as the genome and the proteome. So in eukaryotic cells, which are cells with a nucleus found in animals and plants, DNA from the nucleus and the mitochondria and the chloroplasts, if they're present, make up the cell's genome. So the genome basically refers to all of the DNA or genetic material and instructions in the whole organism, or in a whole cell. So the DNA is found in the nucleus, it's found in mitochondria as a circular loop, and it's found in chloroplasts if they're present. In prokaryotes, DNA is made up in slightly different ways. There's a nucleoid region of circular DNA, which is the main DNA, and then there are smaller circles of DNA called plasmids, making up the overall cell genome. So in this case we have nucleoid DNA, and we have plasmids. So altogether, this is the prokaryote's genome. And so, by definition, a genome is the full set of DNA found in an organism, and all of its different forms. So the genome contains all of the genes that an organism would ever need, which code for all of the proteins that the organism would need as well. And the proteome is a word that refers to all of the different proteins that are made by those genes. So the genome is all of the genes found in the cell, the proteome is all of the proteins made by all of those genes. So for example, the protein keratin can be made by a particular gene found in hair and nails. The protein collagen 
is made by a different gene. And there's proteins that are more functional, like haemoglobin, made by another gene as well. And you can get various varieties of each of these proteins, therefore there's other genes that code for the same molecule but in different variants. And it goes on and on, and there's a massive range of proteins. So this would be the proteome. So the entire genome encodes for the entire proteome. And by definition, the proteome is the full range of proteins that can be synthesized from the genome. So how does the DNA actually code for proteins? How do we turn instructions into building an actual protein? Because the DNA doesn't contain any proteins within its molecule, how does it actually cause a protein to be formed? In order for a gene to code for a polypeptide, two processes have to happen. The first one is known as transcription. A section of DNA molecule is transcribed into a type of molecule called an RNA molecule. In particular, it's called messenger RNA, or mRNA. So the DNA doesn't change its structure, the DNA encodes for something to be built. The gene is read, and the gene information is carried out by a messenger molecule called mRNA, which is a single-stranded polynucleotide with a slightly different structure to DNA. So this isn't any part of the DNA, this isn't the same thing. The mRNA is taking the information as its own copy from the DNA out to the cell. The DNA itself hasn't lost anything, this is not being cut out of the DNA originally. So the process of transcription is making messenger RNA from a DNA template. So it's taking a gene, making a messenger. The second stage of this is known as translation. The RNA molecule is then translated into a specific amino acid sequence, and this would then build up the protein. So the mRNA that is taking the information has the information to make the protein in it, all of those nucleotides and those bases, made of A, C, T, and G. And then this gets read by particular machinery in the cell. And as it's being read, amino acids are gathered in a particular order, and this order is governed by the order of bases on the mRNA. So the code of bases is translated into a code of amino acids. It's like an instruction and an order telling you to put this piece next to this piece next to this piece. And these are the amino acids, which join up by peptide bonds and form a protein, or a polypeptide specifically. So again, by definition, translation is the process of making proteins by forming a specific sequence of amino acids based on coded instructions in mRNA. And those original instructions were read from DNA. The sequence in the order of the amino acids, or the primary structure of a protein, is really important. And this is determined by the sequence of bases in a gene. So remember, the gene itself is made up of A's, C's, T's, and G's. And a gene will have lots and lots of these in various combinations. And the combination, or the code, of this will determine which amino acids come and in which order. This then determines the structure of the protein. The primary structure, or the primary can be given by this symbol as one with a naught above it, is the sequence of amino acids. And then the primary structure of the protein is very important because this determines the tertiary structure and the overall 3D shape, therefore function, that a protein folds into. So once a polypeptide has been made, it will have a specific number and order of amino acids and specific types of amino acids. And this is the primary structure. It will be a certain primary structure that will lead to a certain type of folding and it will lead it to a very specific 3D shape, which is the tertiary structure. And this 3D shape is what determines the protein's overall function. So 3D shape is very important for function, which is governed by the primary structure, which is governed by the order of nucleotides in RNA, and therefore DNA. So therefore, even though it's indirect, DNA does code for the shape of proteins, and therefore for their function. So through RNA, machinery, and the primary structure, the DNA has told a protein to be made in a specific way to then go and do its job. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.